womb thickening, also known as endometrial hyperplasia, happens when the womb's lining, also known as the endometrium, becomes abnormally thick. It can result from various factors and its prevention usually involves addressing any of those underlying causes. Hi, I'm Dr. Sylvia. I'm so excited you're here. In this video, you'll get excellent health tips that will make a real difference. But that's not all. I also create personalized guides, tools, and plans tailored to your specific health needs. These resources will help you reach your goals faster and more effectively. So don't miss out on your free copies. Check out the links in the description box below. Before you go on to watch the video, please like and subscribe to my channel so we can continue this health journey together. And now let's get started. I'll see you in the rest of the video. First, what do we know about the lining of the womb? Well, the womb lining is a dynamic tissue and that means it's regularly changing during your menstrual cycle but where is it exactly if i asked you to tell me where the womb lining is located what would you say don't worry let's look for it together well look at this tomato it's actually meant to go in my lunch salad today but i think we can put it to some good use before that so let's cut it into halves Okay, so let's look closely at one of those two halves. The outer layer of our tomato here represents the outermost part of the womb, whose job it is to protect the womb like the skin. Now, the next or the middle layer, that's that thick fleshy bit here, that's just below the outer layer, represents the middle layer of the womb, which is the muscular layer. It is thicker and provides the womb structure. And this is the part of the womb that contracts during menstruation or during labor. And it's also the part of the womb from where fibroids grow. Lastly is the innermost fleshy layer just surrounding the seeds of the tomato. It is usually a thin lining and that represents the endometrium or the inner layer of the womb. It is soft and rich with blood vessels and it's the part of the womb that is most affected by hormone changes during the cycle. This is the part of the womb that shed during menstruation. Its primary function is to prepare for potential implantation of a fertilized egg, thus facilitating pregnancy. So let's put my lunch away. <laughs> And it is this aspect of the womb that we're looking at in today's discussion on womb thickening. Some other points about the inner womb lining are the changes during the menstrual cycle. Under the influence of hormones like estrogen and progesterone, there are three primary phases every cycle. Phase one, which is as you approach ovulation, the lining begins to get thicker. In phase two, just as ovulation starts, the lining matures and prepares for implantation. And in phase three, if there's been no fertilization and implantation, the lining is shed as menstrual blood. Now let's look at what potential effect having a thickened womb lining could have on a woman from effects on your periods or during pregnancy, even during sex. Is pregnancy possible with thickening of the womb lining? Now, a healthy endometrium, that is the inner lining of the womb, is crucial for fertility. It must have that right thickness and structure to implant an embryo successfully. If it's too thin or too thick, the lining can prevent implantation leading to fertility issues. If the lining is too thick, it becomes less receptive, reducing the chance of a successful pregnancy. But with that said, there are different types of womb hyperplasia or thickening that doctors recognize. Women with simple hyperplasia or thickening may still be able to conceive, but those who have more complex hyperplasia or changes will face more difficulty with this. Sometimes hormone treatment may help to restore the womb lining so that pregnancy is possible. And the other thing is that if you do conceive with a thickened womb, you will need careful monitoring. There may be a higher risk of complications, for example, miscarriage, and it's important to detect any changes very early on. Now, what are your 
your periods like with a thickened womb? If you have a thickened womb lining, you will likely experience obvious changes in the pattern of your periods and your menstrual flow. They will depend on hormone imbalance that's going on as well as the degree of thickness of the lining. The most common changes are heavy menstrual bleeding with prolonged blood flow, irregular, unpredictable periods. Some women may have short cycles, less than 21 days, while others may have prolonged more than 35 days. There may be spotting in between periods thanks to the irregular shedding from the womb. There is more likely a risk of having period pain because of the large amount of tissue that the womb has to shed, meaning that it will stimulate more contraction from the womb muscle. Remember the middle muscle layer that we talked about earlier. And sometimes there may be prolonged periods without any bleeding, in other words, absent periods. And during this time where there are no periods, the womb lining itself will continue to get thicker without shedding. And eventually when menstruation does happen, there's very heavy, sometimes painful bleeding for several days. And now let's look at whether having a thickened womb lining could affect sexual intercourse. Well, endometrial hyperplasia doesn't directly affect sexual intercourse, but it can lead to symptoms and conditions which could affect your sexual health and how you feel about sex. For example, experiencing heavy bleeding, pelvic pain or painful periods, irregular menstrual flow, as well as the emotional and psychological impact of going through all of this can affect sex drive or interest in sex. It can cause discomfort. If you're constantly losing a lot of blood, you could get anemic and feel tired definitely not in the mood for having sex, or all of this going on may make you feel self-conscious or uncomfortable about engaging in sex during these times. So now that we've addressed some of those, let's move on to the next segment, looking at what actually causes the thickening of the womb lining. The first is hormonal imbalance. That can commonly happen for different reasons. For example, excess estrogen. The most common cause of a thickened womb lining is an imbalance between estrogen and progesterone. And in that instance, there is too much estrogen and not enough progesterone. Now, this can develop naturally during perimenopause before you actually become menopausal because that's when ovulation starts to become irregular or stops preventing the production of progesterone. The next condition that can lead to hormonal imbalance is obesity or being very overweight. Fat tissue can produce additional estrogen, which leads to this imbalance and potential thickening of the womb lining. Next, there's a condition known as PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome. Make sure you check out my playlist here where I talk a lot more about this condition, how its symptoms, how it's diagnosed, treatment, and so on. But it's a hormone balance problem that often results in a lack of ovulation, meaning there's prolonged estrogen exposure without the counterbalance of progesterone, and we've seen what that can result in. Another hormone imbalance situation is if you're taking HRT, that is hormone replacement therapy. And this can refer to postmenopausal women taking HRT who still have their womb, they've not had a hysterectomy. If they're taking the type of HRT, which contains estrogen only, their womb is being exposed to estrogen alone without the counterbalance of progesterone. This makes them more at risk of developing a thickened womb lining. Another factor that can lead to a woman developing a thickness of her womb lining is her age. Women over 35 are more likely to experience hormone imbalances that can potentially lead to womb hyperplasia. Conditions such as diabetes and insulin resistance, which is when our bodies or tissues are not responsive or sensitive to insulin as they should be, can also affect hormone imbalance and contribute to thickening of the womb lining. Apart from HRT, some other drugs are implicated in thickening the womb lining. A good example is a drug that can have an estrogen-like effect on the womb, potentially leading to thickening of the womb lining. A good example is a drug like tamoxifen, which is used in treating or preventing breast cancer. Still talking about causes of thickened womb lining, another factor that we should be aware of which could relate to thickening of the inner womb lining is the genetic factor. And by that I mean the chances or the tendency to have a thickening of the womb lining may be higher in families where other family members have had a history of womb or ovarian or colon or bowel cancer. What can we do 
to prevent thickening of the womb lining. Like I said in the beginning, this will largely depend on the cause, but it's important that we manage and monitor for thickening of the womb lining because it can increase the risk of developing womb cancer. A lot of these preventive measures relate to lifestyle factors. So the first thing will be to maintain a healthy weight. Since obesity is linked to increased estrogen levels, maintaining a healthy weight through a good diet moderating the different food groups and exercise can help to balance hormone levels and reduce the risk of endometrial hyperplasia. Of course, it's important to manage the underlying conditions. Proper management of conditions like PCOS, uh, diabetes or insulin resistance that we mentioned before can help to regulate the hormones and of course reduce the chances of the womb lining becoming thicker. In some cases birth control medication or progesterone treatment may be useful. This can apply to women who have irregular periods or PCOS where some birth control or progesterone treatment can help to regulate the menstrual cycle and balance the estrogen levels. Women would usually only have estrogen only HRT if they've had a hysterectomy. So if you have not had your womb removed and you are on estrogen only, you must have a discussion with your doctor about adding progesterone to balance the estrogen. The next thing that would be useful in preventing is having regular monitoring. So women who could be at an increased risk of having thickened womb lining, for example, if you're overweight or if you have PCOS or have had a thickened womb lining in the past, should have regular monitoring. Now, this can include simply keeping track of your menstrual periods. How long do they last? How heavy or light is the flow? But it can also include having things like pelvic examinations regularly or ultrasound scans or other tests that can assess the health of the womb. We've talked about drugs that could affect the womb in the way that estrogen can. So if you're taking a drug like tamoxifen to prevent or treat breast cancer, it's important that you're discussing both the benefits and the risks with your doctor and ensuring that you're having regular monitoring to prevent the development of a condition like thickened womb lining. Other healthy lifestyle choices are important here. They can help to reduce the hormone imbalance and you know the risk of developing thickening of the womb lining. So avoid excessive consumption of alcohol, stop smoking and so on. Make sure you go and check out more health information tips on this playlist here. Let me know if you found this video helpful in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.